Hi again everyone, welcome back to the Focus Attack Tech Corner. Today we will be touching on one of our newest products, the Gamerfinger HBFS G3. We're really excited to have this in the store, as it boasts a wide range of customization options. In the interest of keeping modders educated, we will go over how to assemble and install these. One of the most important things to keep in mind with this product is that the inside of the push button barrel is keyed for the micro switch to be installed a certain way, shown here in red. A big attraction of the HBFS G3 is that it allows for you to choose from a variety of micro switches to be installed, tailored to your feedback and noise preferences. It also can support custom art for inserts, and there are plenty of color choices to choose from, with more to come. We will be installing these in our demo all fight sticks housing, the same one introduced from the previous video. Let's start by looking at the parts for a single push button. Seen here is a push button barrel, a Cherry MX red switch, an art cap, and then the push button plunger cap. All of these need to be assembled in a specific order, so just follow along and we'll get you situated. First let's look at the push button plunger cap. Many modders enjoy the appeal of being able to install art inserts into their push buttons so as to maximize the amount of space the art occupies, so it's easiest to install the art insert in the push button plunger before doing anything else. You can do this by first seating the art in the plunger and then lining up the art cap with the plunger. If you'll notice, they are cut very similarly, and there is a retaining notch on both sides to keep the art cap in place. It only takes very slight effort to seat the art cap. You may notice that it has some give, but as long as it is flush with the bottom of the plunger rim, it's totally fine. It bears mentioning that the art cap is specific to certain plungers offered, so be careful while deciding which ones to purchase. Next let's look at the push button barrel. If you look very closely on the inside of the barrel, specifically towards the bottom, there are two staggered slots. These are the slots that your micro switch will seat in. To be more specific, the micro switch can only be installed one way. Grabbing the micro switch of your choosing, pay careful attention to its orientation. The plunger needs to be facing up and the pins on the underside should be aligned to seat into the slots of the push button barrel. This is very important as you do not want to break pins or replace a micro switch. Guide the micro switch into the push button barrel, taking care to ensure that it is guided into its slots. After this, you will want to push in on the micro switch until you hear a bit of a loud click. These micro switches are meant to be firmly seated into the push button barrel. Now that you have assembled both the plunger cap and the barrel, it's time to join the two to create glorious gamer finger action. If you look at the underside of the plunger cap, you will notice that it has a cross-shaped indentation identical to the micro switch plunger. You will want to make sure that not only does the plunger cap align with the micro switch, but that the ears on the plunger cap align with the slots on the sides of the push button barrel. Combine both parts while keeping note of their alignment until the plunger cap is seated into the push button barrel. You may want to give it a firm squeeze after seating it, just to be on the safe side. Well, one push button down, seven more to go. It looks like I've got my work cut out for me though. But as a wise man once said, I'm quite confident in my speed, you know. You're totally impressed with how fast and completely believable my assembly speed is, aren't you? This is a mildly time-consuming process, so instead of continuing to pull your leg about how quick I am, despite the fact that this has blatantly been edited, try not to rush through it. There's a lot of parts going on here, and you'll want to make sure that everything is properly seated. The last thing that you want is to get everything installed and find out that one of your buttons doesn't work. You can't forget the lock rings either. They're pretty important. Now that we have a fully assembled set of push buttons, let's take a look at the locking ring. Though snap-in push buttons are popular, long barrel locking ring push buttons allow for them to be used in a wider variety of platforms. Putting the ring on the push button is easy. You just seat the button in your arcade stick or cabinet, and then seat the ring onto the threads and rotate it clockwise until it's tight. To loosen it, you twist the ring counterclockwise. Watch as I install these in our demo housing. I'm using a 2mm hex key to remove the front plate. And again, this is another part of the process where it's pretty important to take your time. You don't want to strip out any of your screws, so take it slow and be sure to use the proper tools. 
Just remember, patience is key. With all your screws removed, it's a pretty good idea to put them in a safe place where it's not possible for you to accidentally lose them. Nothing is worse than doing a project that you're really looking forward to, and then you accidentally lose a screw or two along the way. Just kind of dulls the excitement of the entire situation. With the front plate off, seat the push buttons one by one. The gamer finger push buttons are a bit sturdier than the average push button, so a little bit of force may be needed to seat them completely. The easiest way to tell whether or not they are seated is to visually check for a gap. Just a little extra effort is needed. Let's speed this up here. Words can't even begin to describe how excited I was when I found out that we were getting these in. The multitude of customization options that they offer gives me a lot of things to choose from when I'm going forward with a build. Once all the buttons are seated, fasten them down using the lock washers. Since this is a currently bare housing with no electronic parts in it, we won't go over connecting wiring, but it's treated the same as any other push button. Just reconnect your cables in place of where the old push buttons were. By the time you've gotten to button everything up and it's all said and done, you should be able to enjoy your brand new gamer finger push buttons. That was pretty easy, right? It's my opinion that these are some of the most interesting push buttons that are out on the market at the moment, as the customization options leave so much room open for potential. I can't wait to see the creations that come out of the community with these. Thanks for watching.